Let's uh, let's actually continue sort of the tour here of kind of fascism in action. So in Brazil, there's a reason that I was covering this story. There's a reason we were talking about Lula as a political prisoner. There was a reason why, you know, I did a little bit of coverage and I understood that the that Dilma was it was a coup, that the impeachment was totally illegitimate. And I understood that obviously this Lava Jato process was a political one to delegitimize the left from very early on. But I think so many of us bought very easily into a moralistic narrative about the Workers' Party. There was not nearly enough left solidarity with Workers' Party and their leadership. And there was a very easy, simplified narrative that was exported to the United States, which fits with an easy, simplified narrative about the Democratic Party, which, by the way, is more true of Democrats. So in other words, if Barack Obama did a tenth of what Lula did for Brazil, we would all have to admit that Barack Obama was the best president in U.S. history, even with his imperfections and so on. So the accomplishments were stunning. And also the prototype of imprisoning your political opposition and the weaponization of the judiciary, as well as the press, you already see in action against Corbyn, you see in some form against Sanders, and I wouldn't be so sure that you wouldn't see even in this more radical form that we've seen taken to an extreme in Brazil. So we had a corruption team that was lionized in the press from the New York Times to the Jimmy Dore show that was a engine of far-right politics Sergio Moro, the head of it, is now Bolsonaro's justice minister. And these new uh, reportings, which are ongoing from The Intercept, have m given full evidence to what was always analytically obvious, which is that Lula is a political prisoner, Lava Jato is corrupt, right-wing hacks. And now Sergio Moro is getting at least the first fraction of a political accounting, although, of course, he's still uh, backed by fascist thug President Bolsonaro, still close relationship with the United States, because again, think of whose interest this whole process has played into. This is a report from Brian Mayer for Telesor. Again, you got to read in, uh, a Brazil Wire and watch Brian Mayer. He's been right and clear about this from the beginning. This is him on uh, Moro's appearing, appearance in the Brazilian Senate. Brazil's Justice Minister Sergio Moro has answered questions in front of the Senate's Justice Commission in relation to the Lava Jato probe. This hearing comes as news outlet The Intercept revealed through leaked audios and messages that then-Judge Moro allegedly worked in tandem with the Lava Jato team to prevent former President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva from running in the 2018 presidential election. This included giving them direct orders during Lula's trial while he was a presiding judge. During the hearing, Moro said he was the real victim as his conversations Pause were it. illegally recorded. I'm the real victim. I'm the real victim. Always the Repub Always the fascist response. I'm the real victim. Adding that a well-structured criminal gang was behind the leaks. <laughs> Our correspondent, Brian Meir, has more from Sao Paulo. This morning, Brazilian Federal Justice Minister Sergio Moro is addressing the Senate. He was called in to testify in response to the revelations published in The Intercept based on leaked social media conversations that while he was leading the Operation Car Wash Task Force, he and his co-workers actively worked behind the scenes to sabotage the 2018 presidential elections, to jail former President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva with no evidence, as they admit in these conversations, deliberately to prevent him from winning the elections. Now he's testifying in front of the Senate and he's trying to play the victim card. He's saying that he's the victim of a crime. His, his conversations were illegally recorded and that this damages further anti-corruption fighting. This is an ironic claim from a man who spent five years illegally recording conversations from the president of Brazil, from former President Lula and from Lula's defense team and leaking those things to the media constantly. 
So it's unclear now whether these revelations will result in Sergio Moro resigning from his justice minister position. But the fact is, his reputation is irreversibly damaged. And if he does stay on in this position, it's going to be as a kind of lame duck. That's exactly right. Remember that this guy was globally lionized across the board, and he's nothing but, again, an authoritarian right-wing hack whose sole purpose in, in the Bolsonaro position of this authoritarian bigot government, his first target was labor unions to apply the same lawfare tactics to destroy and delegitimize any sources of working class uh, response to the austerity and privatization programs of the Bolsonaro regime. Um, and, you know, as Brian said, it's very important that he regularly illegally wiretapped and leaked conversations uh, every step of the way. And that one of the key revelations when Brian says that there was no evidence, not only was there no material evidence of the Lula conviction, four days before they went to trial, the lead prosecutor was emailing other people being like, this is really weak and basically doesn't even fall into our purview. So he's a political prisoner. Join Bernie Sanders in calling for freeing him now. And this story has big implications for us, both in terms of the parallels and because of U.S. support for these regimes from the Justice Department, from the Department of Justice to the Wall Street Journal editorial page. Um.